A solar battery isn't just about saving money on your power bill anymore. You can use it to charge cars, trade energy with the grid, and it basically becomes part of your whole smart energy ecosystem. This video is going to help you work out how to make sure you're installing the right one for you. G'day everyone, Dan and Matt here again from GI Energy. Today we're talking about the future of home batteries, home automation, vehicle to grid, and all of those fun things. Um, so as I said before, obviously batteries have evolved a lot. They're now becoming quite central to lots of cool things you can do. Um, so they can save you a lot more money. They can also make your life a bit easier. And that's going to change quickly. Yeah. So we're going to go through a few different categories here today. We're going to talk about the basics of a battery for those who are new to looking into batteries, how it can save you money, and then briefly how you can maximize those savings. We talk about VPPs, which are also here now. That's a virtual power plant. We're also then going to talk about automation and smart homes and how things are changing there and what's coming in the future. Uh, vehicle to grid, vehicle to home, and what's coming there. That's another one for the future. Um, how batteries are helping stabilize the grid. That's another one that's obviously evolving all the time. Um, what you can do now and then just summarize. So to start with the basics of a battery, how it works, how it can save you money. Matt, do you want to explain that one? Yeah, so a lot of people will have solar panels installed already or may not have anything there, but ultimately the battery captures excess solar energy that you don't consume in your home that ordinarily would go back into the grid, which now is a very, very low rate. Um, the battery then will obviously provide that power when you need it at night or if it's a very overcast day or you've just got a very high consumption for that period. So it's just the final piece of that puzzle to fully insulate your home, obviously from purchasing power from the grid the battery can also be used with some options to provide backup power to the home, whether that might be some essential circuits like your fridge and a PowerPoint or some lights, or full back, like foolproof backup to the house, Armageddon style backup, I suppose. Um, it can also now be used, as you mentioned briefly, with a virtual power plant where you can trade energy to the grid. There's a couple of different options for doing that. So the battery essentially is just unlocking the potential of obviously storing that excess power that's virtually worth nothing and also just providing a full clean home basically yeah. and um, it's pretty much everything all we're installing at the moment. Yeah nearly every <laughs> system particularly since the government subsidy came into effect in midway through 2025 it was mm. um, obviously the uptake of batteries was uh, 99 out of 100 probably now come with batteries. Um, in terms of maximizing your savings, we did a whole video on this and it was probably 20 minutes long. Yeah. <laughs> so we won't dive too much into that. But basically, maximizing your savings without speaking too much about a VPP, you really just want to concentrate as much of your energy still into those daytime hours when your solar panels are working, even though you've got a battery at nighttime. That's right, isn't it? Absolutely right. Obviously, if you can then preserve that stored capacity, depending on how much storage you have and what you need, it just allows you to obviously yeah, still utilize a lot of the solar you're generating for yeah, hot water, air con, pool, whatever you've got there. Um, then you've got your battery as your, as your reserve capacity, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that probably segues nicely into VPPs because part of the reason you want to keep that energy mm. um, stored in your battery for as long as possible is so that during those peak times, you're able to see yourself through, but also ex export excess energy into the grid when it's valuable. So a VPP, virtual power plant, is just a network of battery owners that have all joined together and allowed um, the aggregator to trade the energy with the grid. So I'm with Amber Electric. The way mine works is energy is very, very cheap during the day. So I'm able to grid charge my battery where needed. I'm able to use grid power for free or for one, two, three, four cents throughout that middle of the day when everyone's selling solar back. Time 4, 4.30 comes around, it becomes very expensive. That's when my battery discharges into my home to save me buying. Mm -hmm. And then also exports back. So you can export back then at 10, 20, 30 cents, even over a dollar at times, and then generate some revenue, which can offset the fixed costs on your bill, but also can generate a credit on your power bill. So that's a VPP in a nutshell. Um, they're here now, they're available, and um, Amber Electric is probably the most popular one. Moving forward into the future, we're probably going to see more of those. Um, there are others available right now, but Amber is the most dynamic. It learns your, your usage and does all that trading for you, so you don't have to sit on an app and do it for you. Um, but there's probably going to be more of them, isn't there? 
Oh, absolutely. There's a, there's a couple of others, and there was one the other day that I'd, I'd never heard of before that someone mentioned to me that I still need to have a good look into. Yeah, okay. But um, yeah, like anything, if there's now going to be a couple of hundred thousand battery systems installed, um, especially across the east coast in, in the in the in the NEM where, where everything basically is, there's going to be more and more options to obviously utilise that power um, because it just makes sense to obviously tap into that that market for it. Yeah, hundred percent. It's made a big difference for me. My last few bills, I think, have been thirteen, six dollars, and credit forty or something. Yeah. Whereas, you know, and we're pushing into summer now. At the time of filming, my last bill in summer, granted, I only had half the size battery, but it's eight hundred bucks. Yeah. This most recent one is in credit. Yeah. Um, that's partly because I've doubled my battery size, but also partly because of the VPP. So they make a significant difference. Yeah. One sure. thing that people talk about a lot, and, and quite rightly so, is that they can potentially shorten the lifespan of your battery if you're charging and discharging it more. Yep. Um, which is fair, but um, for me, I've made the decision that I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. Knowing that I'm getting a better return on investment overall. So VPPs are a huge part of the here and now. They're also going to be in the future. There's also more time-based tariffs, which you're on. Yeah. Um, maybe you can explain how they work and how that works with batteries. Yeah, so that may be more suitable depending on your appetite for obviously trading power with the grid. Essentially, a time-based tariff is where there's a very low rate or potentially completely free rate uh, for a couple of hours during a window in the day. Again, when there's excess solar in the network where you can take any power from the grid to fill up your battery and obviously provide any power for your home, for your car charger, again, anything that you've got there. Um, so that every day of the year, regardless if it's beautiful sunshine or pouring rain, your battery's full, and then that way you've got it for the evening and the night. Some now have some lower overnight rates instead of that fixed free window in the day. Some have a small benefit to trade uh, a little bit of power to the grid or just not take any grid power every evening. And some of those will offset your fixed cost, basically. So. Again, there's one or two new ones now that have popped up in the last few months, most likely because of this subsidy, because now I believe there was 90,000 batteries installed in the first four months of the subsidy. Wow. So yeah, if they can tap into obviously people with those tariffs and utilize <clears throat> the battery power and make it more effective, again, that's gonna grow and grow. And what may be suitable for your battery and your neighbor's battery could be completely different. Yeah. And that's what we want to understand and look at what the right one is. And again, because they will change over time, We've all got different batteries. We've all got different retailers in the office here. So if you've got questions in the future, come back to us and ask us when, when we've installed the system because we want to make sure you're, you're on the right plan. Yeah. Um, so yeah, VPPs and the time base can be really, really handy. Yeah, 100%. <clears throat> um, the next one was uh, automation, smart homes. Yep. Something that's becoming obviously more prevalent. The, I guess the basic, um, most sort of lowest easiest one there to access to get the best savings from is just automating when your aircon comes on and your pull pumps and things like that that's a low level automation yeah so you can do that obviously um already but there's more coming yeah. in terms of being able to control everything remotely yeah. and then automate so what we're seeing obviously with amber electric is they're learning how you use energy and then taking control of your battery and discharging power to the grid when it's more valuable taking power from the grid when it's free or very cheap so that's an automated that they, they know your load there yeah so my amber electric app will be working very different to my neighbors app based on their load profile in the future when we can control things a little bit more intelligently and and this is available now but with a bit more messing around yeah um, your aircon will know when to come on based on the temperature so you'll be able to if you choose to your aircon will be able to ramp up and down depending on what the grid is doing and yeah. depending on what the temperature is so for example, if we, uh, right now, it started to get really warm, no one's at home, and it can see that it's gonna be very warm into the evening, it could then tick on your aircon and then ramp it down closer to when the energy costs get higher. Yeah. So it might go from being on 23 to 25 degrees, from high fan to low fan, from drawing eight kilowatts to 500 watts, yeah. which is really possible. And it would do that for you, so that when you come home, your house is nice and cool, you haven't paid anything for it. Yeah. <laughs> Same with pool pumps. Yeah. Um, and then it can be, uh, you know, you can just see where this can go with other appliances as well. Um, even your washing machine, you can leave that to, to, to come on at the right time. So there's lots of stuff coming, I oh, guess. I think we did a video about some of the stuff I do. <laughs> I'm yeah. quite a, I guess low level is probably fair. I'm not the, the smartest person on doing some of the, the more intricate smart home things. 
but those little ones you can do yourself and I think I think the aircon's a big one that's something I like to go into in a, in a, in a lot of cases yeah and um, particularly with one battery that we install a lot of the control on that is so good yeah there's a smart port there's other controls you can do for sort of circuit level stuff just to even just to view what they're doing not necessarily even turn them on or off but at least you've got that knowledge yeah and um, <clears throat> yeah I think the smart home is probably quite a big one because I guess some of those I had a client the other day that's building a beautiful new home that's using um, Control 4. I'd never heard of it. Again, I'm not a super techie person. I'm, I'm down with all those things, but it was really intricate in terms of, he can control everything in his home okay. from an app. Um, and there's some real basic um, integration, obviously, that's done there. And we now need, I need, now need to figure out a way of how he incorporates that into his system, because he, he, that's what he wants. Yeah. And those are the sort of things that I'm, I, I guess we're talking about where that's just going to get progressively smarter all the time, exponentially smarter moving forward, particularly as we consume more power, we have more appliances, we use more aircon, I guess is the big one. A lot of people are adding pool heaters. That's obviously a huge power draw yeah, that massive. you could then isolate really well. So I think it's just having a system that has the ability to, to learn with firmware updates and um, with the hardware that you install, will still get smarter at the same time. Yeah, 100%. And the batteries can be central to that in terms of <coughs> being able to obviously charge and discharge power and send it where it needs to go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's something to keep an eye on and um, just make sure if you're choosing a battery that you've got your future proof in there and, and all these capabilities are there for if and when you need them, if not right now. I think with that as well, working with someone that's gonna give you the time of day moving forward because adjusting those settings isn't really that easy. Yeah. I don't know how easy it is with some products with the ones that we use. I find it easy because we've done it a lot. Yeah. But for the end user, I was talking to somebody yesterday trying to set up a time-based window and they're really struggling in the app. So I've done it remotely, which again, you're in the industry, you know what you're doing, it's quite easy. But if, you, if you've if you potentially purchased a product that's not as popular, that's maybe installed by a, a different um, different level of installer in the industry, I don't know if that's unfair to say. Someone that's not going to help, basically. So yeah, that, that isn't building in that service element for you because in in five years time, there's gonna be some very different things you may wanna integrate. That may not always be possible, but at least give yourself the best chance of, of doing so. Yeah, yeah, can we talk about it all the time, don't we? Just use somebody that you can trust that's gonna be there for a long time and has the, um, the team in place to be able to help with that stuff. Yeah. Um, if not, it's useless. Yeah. Uh, and it would be frustrating as a consumer. Oh, I know what it's like when you're you know, trying to set something up that you're not familiar with and it's a nightmare and you can't speak to anyone. It's yeah. One of the most annoying things you come across in, in modern life and um, yeah, yeah, we're here to help with stuff like that. Uh, the next one on my list was uh, V to X as it's being called now. So electric vehicles, power in homes, trade in energy. We've done a whole video on this as well, but just to touch on it, it basically means if you had an electric vehicle with let's say an 80 kilowatt hour battery, potentially you can drive that in, plug it in, power <coughs> your home, trade energy with the grid, use it for specific loads even. <clears throat> one for the future again. Yeah, I think this one we get a lot of questions about and there's probably not a ton of information out there because it, that is really new. And um, there's all the, we, as you said, we did a video with quite a lot of stuff that just I get, gets off the cuff about how that would impact the car warranty and the manufacturers and other things. So there's, there's a lot of stuff happening there, but the tests are being done in pretty much all states now. Yeah. So this is here and it's ready. And um, it could potentially be a massive thing because Moving forward, there's going to be more and more electric vehicles purchased, obviously less combustion vehicles globally as well. So having a system again that potentially has this integration, I, I think is really important. Um, you may not necessarily want to sell all the power from your car and there's other things involved there, but at least again, having that integration where it's just, f it's just forming that full home um, energy equation, I suppose, however you want to describe it. Um, it's definitely going to, like, if we record this video in five years, it's probably going to be very different. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, as you said, it's happening now. It's just not really ready for the everyday consumer yet. Yeah. The cars probably aren't ready, but 100% will be part of your overall energy mix yeah, in the, sure. the not-too-distant future. Um, the last one that I wanted to touch on with is more generally how batteries are help, helping to stabilise the grid. Obviously, we've got this battery rebate in mm -hmm. Australia that came into effect halfway through 2025. 
as with all government policies, it had fairly mixed reviews. Yeah. Some people were against it, some people love it. Um, obviously, we're a solar company, so for us, we think it's great. I love it. <laughs> well, I mean, and, and it's not just great because people are able to access batteries, it's actually quite a clever scheme because yeah. what's happening here is the government are subsidising somewhere in the region of 30% of a battery for yeah. people. So all these batteries are getting purchased. The government are obviously investing a significant amount of money. What was the original amount was stated? 2.3 billion. 2.3 billion. We all know it's going to be more than that. Let's say it's 3 billion by the time the scheme ends in 2030. So they've invested 3 billion, which is 30% of the cost of the infrastructure. Homeowners are contributing the remainder. So yeah. now they've got a lot more value than the money that they've invested yeah. in lots of very small batteries. You could argue that they could have invested that money in a in existing infrastructure, but then that needs to be maintained. Yes. Whereas batteries, home batteries, are being maintained at the homeowner's cost. Yeah. So we've got however many hundred thousand small batteries now coming online that probably wouldn't have done without the rebate. Yeah. That's helping stabilise the grid at no maintenance cost to the government. Yeah. Plus the homeowner's getting a great deal. That's how I see it. And um, I do understand that it's not perfect. One of the things that gets missed is renters. Yep. Um, and there needs to be something done there to help people who are renting homes save money with solar and batteries. Um, but that aside, it is helping stabilise the grid yep. because especially if people are using VPPs because now what's happening is we're storing energy during the day where the grid doesn't need it. So that's one problem that's slowly being solved. There's too much going back into the, from solar in the day. Now a lot of that's going to be stored in a battery. And then in the evening, a lot of it's going to be dispatched by those same batteries where yep. the grid's really struggling. I think I've probably summarised that. Yeah, I think pretty well, to be honest, mate. It's, um, I don't really have anything to add there. It's, um, as you said, as a solar company, it's, it's great for us, but you can help people that, that have wanted to do this. Yeah. And I think you mentioned all the things that stabilise the grid, which is brilliant. And at the same time, the homeowner has, with the right system and the right installer, backup power. Your own stabilisation. That's what I was about to say. You, yeah. Sorry, mate. I wanted to get something in that part, <laughs> but that's what I was going to say. Like, the grid is unstable, yep. which is causing grid outages in general. It's not necessarily always from storms or, or, or weather events that obviously can do that as well. Yep. There is an instability in the network. I've had two or three in the last month, just like one hour or, or 10 minute outages. One was 7 p.m., two have been like 2 or 3 a.m. Okay. Uh, James, uh, one of the guys in the office here, he, he had one the other night for about three hours. That wasn't from a weather event. No. That was just the network, so something that's going on there. And especially in little pockets, depending on where you are, like the network in some areas is really, really old. Yeah. And the cost to upgrade that is ludicrous, Yeah. essentially. And um, if this can form and help that in that way, plus you get the benefit of having backup power. Um, my neighbour would just put a system in, he had his lights on and everyone was asking what was going on, you know what I mean? It's, it's such a cool little talking point. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's great that it can, it can help in that, in that manner to obviously, um, yeah, to stabilise the network. Yeah, 100%. <clears throat> we get power cuts where we are. We're now coming into those really hot times at the time of filming this video. So um, we're going to get more and it's so good having your lights on <laughs> when the power goes down and your ceiling fans and yeah. it's, it's, it's a real massive benefit. So I guess what can you do now as a homeowner or a business owner watching this video if you're looking at saving money um, on your power bill and, and potentially having some backup power there and you want to make sure that you're future proofing it then I guess what we always talk about is find the right people to talk to first and foremost. We're obviously a solar company so we're going to be biased but I'm not saying we're the only ones that are any good at this stuff. There's uh, lots of good companies out there, but unfortunately, there's a lot of really poor ones as well. It's just mm. the nature of the industry that we're in. With there being government subsidies, it's very transient. A lot of people come in at a low barrier to entry, set up a company thinking they're gonna make loads of money because of rebates, don't tend to look after people very well. And we've seen it time and time again since 2011 when we started. So many people out there have got systems with no warranties and no support. Yeah. So get a proper consultation talk to the person about all of the stuff that we're talking about in this video and make sure that you're future proofing it properly so that it's going to be there as long as you're going to be there for. Yeah, spot on. Um, what we'll do is put a link in the description to our battery guide. So if you are looking at purchasing a battery, there's uh, some helpful tips in there. It's a free downloadable resource that I think a lot of people have found quite helpful. Um, if we've missed anything, please put it in the comments or contact us. We're more than happy to help if we can. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch. Thank you.